So I'm walking by 160 Claremont, and the window's open, upstairs. I'm just walking by, going somewhere. I hear this incredible jazz piano, like way beyond what I knew. And I, I stopped and listened for like 10 or 15 minutes. And it was so compelling, I was like, man, whoever that is, I need to go in and like meet them and study from them and find out how they can do that. So I uh, rang a bunch of bells and someone buzzed me in and I went, I walked floor by floor through 160 Claremont Avenue till I got to the fourth floor. And I walked by this apartment and the sound was coming from there. Now, you know, I was a brash, bold, hungry to play jazz, so I'm like, at all costs, I need to do this. And I listened for a, a couple of minutes, and it was like, is McCoy in here? I, like, I didn't know, I, it was like unbelievable. I knocked on the door, and I hear someone walk through the door, <laughs> the door opens to this Kenny Kirkland. I'm like, Kenny! And I'm looking around, like, expecting this, like, where's Kenny Barron? And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing here? He said, I'm just practicing. I said, that was you? He was like, yeah. He's like very shyly, like, no, wait a minute. That piano playing that I was hearing outside, like, that was you? He's like, yeah. And I, I couldn't believe, I was stunned. I said, Kenny, how did you get so good? How did you, how is that even possible? How did you, get so good, because it was way beyond me. I was like, how did you get so good? And he said, without missing a beat, he said, Oscar Peterson method book. And this was the moment when I realized that I was in, in the presence of a real genius. <laughs> Kenny, um, had a, a, a pretty, had a very supportive and great family, and it was a pretty idyllic up until 1979. And in 1979, his father died. And his father was like his best friend. And there was a marked shift in him at that point. And, uh, uh, but I think Kenny uh, lived very much in his, head and very much in his own feelings. Uh, he had earlier had a, a, a terrible accident that hospitalized him for a, 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 quite a while, months in fact, where his leg was caught in a train in the subway. That's why he walked with a limp and with a cane and he had a, a, a steel rod in his leg. And, uh, but Kenny was one of the first people in our sphere who lost a parent. He was one of the first people that I ever knew that had gone through a catastrophic illness, you know, or an accident like that. Um, and he had also had a car accident later and he had, you know, so I think that it, I think he, he was dealing with things that were very deep and very, um, you know, heartbreaking, if you want to say that. Well, I think Kenny, you know, one lens to look at is that it was a broken heart and another lens to look at it is that, you know, the cracks in your heart are what lets the light in. And I believe that the same cracks that caused him such internal pain and, and uh, that drove his feelings deep are also the same cracks that let this light of genius shine in, through him to the world. It, it, it cracked him open and he brought that out, it came out. And so what was once an introverted experience because it was insular and, and, and in a closed environment was f cracked open, forced open with all the the uh, wonderful benefits of that, that we as listeners get to benefit from that, but the personal cost and how a person deals with that kind of tragedy and pain in their own life, you know, everyone handles it differently and it, depending on what the time they are, but to have, you know, to face that at, at, a, at that age, um, I think was really, really hard for him. Mm -hmm.